Now, first of all, one needs to get a sense of what it really means. We talk about four to six degrees warming, planetary warming, so the global average by 2100, if we do business as usual. Think of the global mean temperature as like your body temperature. So if you have two degrees warming in your body, you have fever. Six degrees warming means you are dead, really. And that's the metaphor you have to use for the planet. That means with four to six degrees warming, our world would completely change. The world as we know it would disappear. And maybe it's most clearly understood in terms of sea level rise. Eh? So one degree warming means in the end at least three to four meter sea level rise. Two degrees warming means seven or eight. And it would simply mean that many of the low-lying island states would just disappear. Their home would be destroyed. So we need to do everything to avoid that. A week ago, you had in Asia temperatures of 54 degrees centigrade uh, in Pakistan and also in Iran. And we can even calculate with five, six degrees global warming, you would create inhabitable zones on this planet. There would be regions, in particular in Asia, where you could not survive in the open without air condition, physiologically, yeah? because temperatures would hit 60 degrees. Yeah? And it simply would mean you have no-go areas. Yeah? Now think of slums, where people have not even air conditioning in any way, would simply mean there will be places where you cannot work and then you cannot survive. Eh? So, it's really about can you survive under climate change? And the answer is no, at least in certain regions in Asia. So what we are really worried about is migration and conflict. Eh? So in the end, all these knock-on effects will have a major effect and will heavily impact on national security and international migration, really. Yeah? So in the end, it might mean that hundreds of millions of people will be displaced in space because of global warming, and you have to accommodate them. Yeah? And you see, we in Europe just made this experience, in Germany in particular, so I come from Germany. So we have taken up a million of refugees, Believe me, this is very hard to digest. Eh? Now we're talking about a million being absorbed by one of the richest countries in the world. Now think of hundreds of million people absorbed by poor people and poor countries eh, in Southeast Asia. Because in general, if people leave Bangladesh, they will first go to West Bengal in India and so on. Eh? If Tuvalu gets inundated, people will hop to the next island. Eh? We will not buy a business class ticket and go to Los Angeles. Eh? Digesting, absorbing major migration waves is a challenge which I think most of the current nations will not be able to meet. So let's avoid it. We often make this joke, the first law of capitalism is don't kill your customers. Eh? If you kill your customers, you cannot do business, eh? clearly. No, but if in, in a more sober way, you can just look at the various sectors, agriculture, for example, eh? fisheries and so on. Fisheries, I mean, climate change comes with ocean acidification. Half of the CO2, which we put into the air by burning fossil fuels, was absorbed by the oceans. If it isn't stopped under business as usual, ocean will get so acidic but the coral reefs will dissolve virtually. Yeah? Now, one third of marine productivity, including the top predators, fish and so on, is created in the corals. Yeah? So you see on the marine side, marine business will just be destroyed. Same is true for tourism. Yeah? If you have no corals, you will have no people going to the coral reefs. Great Barrier Reef, for example, is at stake as well as the coral triangle here. We do a study, and this is also in the report, how global supply chain 
will be disrupted or even interrupted by extreme events. So when there were the, the big floods in Thailand, for example, a sort of wave was created all over the planet. So first of all, the computer industry in Japan was hit, mm -hmm. and ultimately in the US and so on. So you have knock-on effects, cascades of impacts actually. Yeah? So to put it in one sentence, climate change is really bad for business. First of all, you have to recognize the problem. Our report here is a wake-up call, clearly. Yeah? If you read it, you get scared, clearly, but you need to be scared because the future would be very bleak if we just do business as usual. Once you know there is a big problem, when you have to assess how the various nations and regions will be affected. So even two degrees warming will deliver a completely new world, absolutely. So you have to find out what are you going to do in Vietnam? Huh? What are you going to do in South India, in Kazakhstan, in Uzbekistan? Huh? What needs to happen in Tuvalu and Vanuatu? First of all, try to provide the evidence. Huh? And based on that, you can do good projects. But you have to do it within a strategic framework. So I would urge the ADP to first come up with a differentiated assessment of the situation and then go in and do best practice and do the best proposals of all. People feel there is a, a trade-off between development and climate protection, but that's not true. Uh, as our report makes clear, if you do not stabilize the climate, you will actually destroy the good prospects for development. Uh, and if you do it in a clever way, I mean climate action, you will create new opportunities for doing business actually. Uh. I'll give you just one example. The modern society was created based on the use of fossil fuels. Uh. So the Industrial Revolution started 200 years ago in England and Scotland. This was based on using, in a clever way, coal, later on gas and oil. But now this model has come to an end. This may just push us into adopting a new model of growth. Because solar energy, for example, is abundant here in East Asia. It is free. The sun is shining without any charges, so to speak. I think the climate issue is just giving us the right push in order to go into a new industrial model and that will be built on renewables, in recycling, a circular economy, better use of resources. So in a way, it's an eye-opener because we almost risk to destroy our civilization through the externality of climate change. We wake up and say, oh, there is even a better model of doing sustainable business. Huh? I think we will have another industrial revolution, even a bigger one, and it will be the most important modernization project in the 21st century. So the opportunity is there. Huh? So let's do new business, better business, involving more people, and as a nice side effect, we will save the planet.